slime. Slime Alors voilà, Elliot a déjà passé la bouée et il va s'installer ici, dans ce coin de l'île à l'un à l'autre, pour, euh, pour mettre l'encre. Là, il est en train de, vous le voyez à l'image, il est en train de, euh, de ranger ses voiles et il, euh, il mettra l'encre et puis dès que, dès que ces, ces opérations seront finies euh, nous irons l'approcher à nouveau avec Don pour avoir, euh, pour avoir ces questions et puis nous avons eu aussi une occasion un moment assez spécial, particulier avec lui, entre la bouée et maintenant euh, où il s'est livré un peu sur, sur, sur qui il est en fait euh, et c'était, c'était très beau à entendre Ok, so uh, here we are, we had a bit of a chat with Elliot while we were just motoring back here, but um, Jane caught it, it turned into a little conversation that went a bit in depth, you know, a bit uh, uh, behind the scenes and so on, so uh, Jane was recording it, and we'll run that as another live later, because he said some really interesting things about how he's feeling, and, and uh, he's not confused, but uh, you know, he's getting, well I won't preempt it, you, you, you need to watch it, you know. It explains a lot of things that's going through his head at the moment. So we'll uh, put that up sometime uh, tonight after he drops the pick. So for now, he's uh, just dropping sails, and then uh, uh, once he's dropped his sails, he'll get ready to drop the anchor. And then once he's settled on the anchor, we'll come alongside and have a bit of a chat. So it's a great boat, Gale Force 34. It was uh, designed in the late 70s. I used to look at it and think, wow, that's a cool boat. I was building a little 29-footer then. Um, it's another story. And uh, yeah, they didn't build too many of them, but they're built like a like a brick. In Australia, they call it built like a brick dunny, um, and uh, incredibly strong. And I think they only built about 16, but there was a lot of lot of talk when the design first appeared. So, um, and of course, I think a lot of you know Elliot's story now. And we had a couple of helicopters turn up, and we thought, oh, hello, it could be his, it could be his supporters coming in to say good day, <laughs> because somehow he got here. It's an incredible story, and. Uh, Um, yeah, quite amazing, so uh, good to see. And he's a cool dude, he just does what he feels like doing, eh? He's very, um, we were discussing, would I would I use up my fuel in the GGR and come in around here? I don't know whether I would, I'd have to think about it, but for Elliot it was a simple decision. <laughs> no wind, why well, wallow around out here, there's some rocks and stuff, so he's um, he's made that decision and, and decided to use a bit of fuel. He's been motoring for five hours, because I'm sitting back there watching the weather and think, why is he coming yeah, down the coast? Exactly. We nearly, we didn't miss him, but we thought he'd be here in two or three hours later and uh, yeah. uh, quite surprised so he's been motoring for about five hours to get here he motored down around and, and went around the buoy so we've got photos to prove that so he's able to uh, set off whenever he wants and uh, now there's a bit of a breeze that's popped in it's a bit of a land breeze coming off the land onto the sea it's not a, it's the reverse of a sea breeze um, and uh, he thought oh maybe I should keep going but there's not much breeze here at all and when you look offshore you can see it's pretty calm so Um, you know he's going to stick with his original decision anchor he had a friend here that he thought might have been cruising the area but it's, we couldn't find him we haven't heard of it and um, he'll get a good night's sleep although he said he's getting a lot of sleep so that's kind of uh, cool and looking very relaxed I nearly he wondered he's getting a bit bored sometimes and I thought oh this is I wouldn't tell Elliot this but maybe he should start role playing and think about what he'd do if he broke his boom because when I look at the boom Um, it's a great boat, strong rig, this, that and the other, but it's a tiny section on the, bo on the boom. It's really small in diameter, but it's obviously super thick. Um, and he has got a, a different sort of a boom vang system there. It's not a really rigid one stuck in because the life raft's there, so he's going to vang the boom down at different times, but that puts a bit of load on the, on the middle of the boom as well. So, um, so anyway, that's, that's one of the risks of the Southern Ocean mainly. Um, booms can be susceptible to uh, being overstressed, especially if the boom hits the water and stuff. But it's a great boat. Passed all the surveys, really strong. I'm very impressed with this this boat whole campaign, and uh, all the people that are supporting him. It's really, really quite cool. So no complaints there. Um, anyway, I think he's about to drop the anchor. Uh, oh, we better see this. Oh boy, we better not miss the moment. I'm in the wrong position with the boat. I'll just come and scoot around here. And, see if we can get this action. <laughs> uh, hope it's not too deep. I'm not sure how the, what the depth is here. He's got an echo sounder so he should be able to work it out. Um, it's, uh, mo anchor's usually stowed away on board, um, you know, because so, stop it moving around. You don't really need it in the GGR, but 
Um, yeah, there's, under the rules, as long as no one touches you, gives you anything, so you're completely unsupported, you're able to come in and anchor and uh, work on the boat, service things, do whatever, and set sail again whenever you want. And in fact, uh, in the phone conversation today that's on SoundCloud with Ian Herbert Jones, he's already suggested he'll probably come in and anchor, regardless of the weather, because there's a couple of jobs he needs to do that are underwater, and it'll be the perfect opportunity for him to do that. So I think uh, next boat in may also anchor. Um, and uh, get some work done so the deal there you know people can even if we were a mechanic or something we could come and give him all the advice and opinions he wants but he has to do all the work himself you know Elliot's just dropping the anchor not actually uh, gonna do uh, any well he doesn't have to stop for any work um, and uh, that's a CQR anchor bit of chain he's trying not to scratch the paintwork you know this is a really nice boat <laughs> Ooh, nearly there there you go, he's in. Of course he's got his safety boots on and gloves and wearing goggles, you know, for <laughs> occupational health and safety, it's very important. Uh, wearing a beautiful golden glow brace t-shirt that uh, you can't buy in the shop yet because we, we're too busy to service the shop, but a lot of people have got those shirts and uh, Elliot was proud and uh, dedicated to wear it. In actual fact, he said it's the clean, cleanest shirt on the boat. <laughs> so uh, that sounds like Elliot. And uh, we'll um, try not to drift too far onto his boat. Probably going to end up going over there. Okay. Yeah. Remember to let the anchor go when you throw it over, eh? <laughs> he just said he's going to move the boat. <laughs> so, try not to get mud on your t-shirt, eh? Yeah, yeah. That's right. <laughs> so, he's going to move in a bit closer because we are offshore. I don't know what the depth is, but um, it should be reasonable. Would you like to have a chat? Oui. oui. Si, si je, Merci beaucoup. If I, if I can, petite, a mademoiselle. <laughs> oh, improve your French. Oh, oui, oui, mais, yeah. mademoiselle. Yes. Alors, euh, euh, ce que ce que Don expliquait tout à l'heure, ce sont deux trois petites choses sur le sur le bateau, euh, sur ce bateau qui est assez puissant, qui a un, un gréement euh, puissant, mais qui avait aux yeux de Don une bombe un peu. Don se posait la question tout à l'heure de savoir comment sa bombe, qui est un petit peu un petit peu courte, un petit peu un petit peu comment dire. Euh, oui, disons courte, j'essaie de traduire euh, du mieux que je peux. Euh, comment cette bombe va se comporter dans les mers du Sud euh, Parce que donc, comme vous le savez, qu'on est très bien dans les mers du Sud. Donc on parlait un petit peu de ça. Tout à l'heure, on attendait le moment euh, où Elliot allait poser l'encre, euh, jeter l'encre. Mais cela ne lui convenait pas trop, l'endroit où il était. Donc il va, il va, le, euh, il va le refaire. Son bateau s'appelle euh, Second Wing, le numéro 24. Et puis on rigolait tout à l'heure, euh, on nous racontait aussi, c'était assez amusant parce que personne n'a de vent en ce moment, mais absolument personne. Tout le monde est dans une espèce de, dans une espèce de trou de vent, surtout Yann qui devait arriver aujourd'hui aussi et qui n'arriva vraisemblablement euh, que demain, Yann Herbert Jones. Alors euh, cet après-midi, Don pensait qu'Eliot allait arriver compte tenu de conditions météo vers minuit, une heure du matin. Et à un moment donné, à 16 heures, il commence à s'affoler, il nous dit « je ne comprends pas, il, fait, il vient de l'autre côté de l'île, il doit y avoir plus de vent, il fait quatre nœuds, il va être là d'une minute à l'autre ». Donc on s'est tous ouais. dépêchés pour arriver parce qu'il était porté par un, par un vent, euh, le second vent comme disait Jane, c'est le nom du bateau. Euh, et en fait on a mieux compris quand il est arrivé là qu'en fait il était au moteur depuis un petit moment. Alors est-ce qu'on nous poseront peut-être la question tout à l'heure à Don et ils ont le droit d'avoir du fuel dans le bateau euh, On va de poser, la, et, et poser la question à Don de savoir s'il est possible, euh, s'il est possible en fait de venir au moteur, je ne sais pas trop, je poserai la question. Euh, dans pas très longtemps, dans pas longtemps du tout, nous aurons, euh, il va jeter l'encre, on va filmer la à ceci et puis nous lui poserons quelques questions. Euh, Don disait tout à l'heure aussi, nous avons eu une conversation entre la bouée et, et l'arrivée ici dans la baie, euh, nous avons eu une petite conversation avec lui très intéressante, nous ne l'avons pas interrompu euh, et ce que nous allons faire, parce qu'il ne le dira peut-être pas de la même manière, c'est que Don va la poster dans un second, euh, dans un second temps euh, sur, euh, sur Facebook et sur Youtube, euh, le seul souci c'est que c'était en anglais. Mais en fait, quand c'est sur YouTube, quand une vidéo est en anglais sur YouTube, c'est un petit, une petite astuce que je vais vous donner. Il est possible pour nous, Français, de, de l'avoir avec des sous-titres en français. D'accord Ce sont des sous-titres Google Translation, donc pas très ni poétiques, 
ni parfaitement français, mais on comprend l'idée et parfois c'est assez correctement traduit. Donc sur YouTube, vous pouvez, lorsqu'une vidéo est en anglais, choisir l'option sous-titre, l'option sous-titre en anglais, ah, en français. Et donc vous avez, vous avez la con vous, avez, vous aurez ainsi un peu l'idée de ce qu'il disait qui était assez beau. Maintenant, devinez quoi, je vais vous laisser parce que je vais encore faire quelques petites photos au moment où il jette l'encre. Il est très amusant, il est... je ne sais pas si, si à contre-jour dans le coucher de soleil vous voyez un peu son visage. Il est, il est assez cool, il est dans... Dans son monde, dans son bateau, il ne se pose pas 36 questions. Bah, il n'y a pas de vent, bah, il pour... jette de l'encre. Comme ça, il donne une de mais pourquoi bah, Parce que ça ne sert à rien s'il n'y a pas de vent. Il n'a pas tort. Comme ça, il pourra au moins se reposer. Avoir une nuit euh, tranquille, pas être autour, euh, parce qu'il arrive, c'est le soir déjà. Et effectivement, euh, cette île est comme toutes les îles, il est proche de la côte, il n'a pas beaucoup d'expérience. Et peut-être aussi, je ne sais pas, mais peut-être aussi, est-ce une des raisons pour lesquelles il choisit, alors qu'il le vent, il n'y a pas trop de vent, ou il peut être bizarre et qu'il est très proche de la côte, et peut-être aussi un peu fatigué après ces deux semaines et son premier golf de Gascogne. Euh, donc peut-être ce sont toutes ces raisons-là qui font qu'il choisit de jeter l'encre ce soir. Voilà, voilà, c'était pour la petite partie en français. Et puis, puisque Don a l'air de dire des choses très intéressantes, Hello? je vais... You're no, running out of things to say? No, but we, we, we are feeling like you are saying very deep philosophical things and we are missing I was, that. I was. It's too late? No. Okay, so put them on. <laughs> yes. No, I was just, no, you got to ask a question by our infamous film crew here. Uh, do I miss the fact, you know, when, when I'm in situations like this, you know, alongside Elliot, who I really respect and enjoy and think he's a cool dude and all that sort of stuff, uh, would I... Am I missing not doing the race? And at the moment, I'm not missing doing the race. 